Colour Society of Western Australia. We are thrilled to bits to have you here. Um, Thank you. We've got, we've got quite an audience here and I've told them that they have to keep quiet. So, <laughs> <laughs> and, and if there's any questions, relay them through me or wait till the end, correct? Yes. Yep. Um, those of you at home, if you are asking any questions, can you please do it by your chat line? Because then we can see it and, it and it doesn't interfere with the demonstration. Thank you. Go for it. Okay, it's my turn? Yes, please. Okay, all right. Um, hello, everybody, and thanks for inviting me for today's demonstration. And uh, I'm very pleased to share this um, uh, currently my very favorite uh, subject in my watercolor painting, the barista series. Um, I think that most of you drink coffee. Um, I do. I can't wake up, can't start my day without a two cup of coffee. So a few years ago, I started to paint a watercolor uh, a lot more than it used to be. I'm actually an oil painter myself for the past uh, nearly 20 years professionally. But uh, recent several years uh, since I've been teaching watercolor in Geelong uh, Art Society several years ago. So I started to paint more watercolor. And uh, the most, uh, my favorite subject in recent few years was a barista subject that I totally enjoy painting it. And the people seem to really enjoy it. I got a lot of comments from all over the world through Facebook or galleries. So I'm very glad to have this opportunity uh, to come to Zoom meeting everybody in uh, West, uh, Australia Watercolor Society. Thanks for the invitation from Sue and the committee. And uh, I hope you enjoy today's session. And uh, hopefully I paint well today, not one of those disaster days we all have. Um, uh, <laughs> so before I, I won't say too much about myself, but if you don't know me, you can go to my website, um, lisawongfineart.com. <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, you can, learn a lot about my background and um, uh, before I start painting and introduce my painting here I will share screen with you just for those people who haven't seen the barista series I'll show you several paintings of my probably last year and this year um, so you get the idea what I'm going to show you today okay um, next I'm going to show screen share drawing of a barista I've done probably a couple of years ago, one of the early drawing. What I want to say here, I know many different artists share different uh, knowledge with you, but uh, I only can talk from my perspective. To me, drawing is extremely important to paint watercolor. Um, because I've been doing oil for so long, and I'm actually quite a good drawer since I was uh, uh, little. So many people ask me, how can you paint the watercolor so well? as an oil painter. I think the question is thanks to my drawing skill. So if any of you out there want to improve your watercolor painting, please don't forget to improve your drawing. You, you will be surprised how much better your watercolor become once your drawing improves. All right, so here's a drawing I did this barista um, based on some photo I took in the local cafe in Melbourne. And the next stage, I'll show you the first painting stage and uh, you know, if you don't know what the result looks like, you might think, oh my God, this is a disaster. Doesn't look anything good. But look at the result. This is just zooming into this one particular barista because the girl actually didn't look as good as I expected. So I cropped her out. So this is the process I will be painting in general when I paint watercolor, particularly the uh, barista series. I start from drawing and uh, uh, to uh, middle stage of painting the middle tone, and then I put all the darkest dark later on, okay? So that's just a quarter sheet. Uh, I'll show you some more work. This is actually a full sheet. Uh, was a painting a few years ago, I uh, entered the uh, French watercolor Biennale in France. So as you, if any of you try the full sheet in watercolor before you know, it's quite difficult. I can paint the oil up to a meter, no problem, but I found even a full sheet for watercolor, it takes a lot of a challenge. So this is a good uh, study drawing of uh, three baristas, how I do the composition study. 
And the next stage, you know, um, my goal was to leave all the white is white, then uh, block out all the middle tone. And then next stage, all the details goes in and all the darkest stuff goes in. So your painting start to really pop uh, without uh, all this dark stuff. Very typical problem for watercolor is uh, looks wishy washy. Uh, another uh, sample here. This is a half sheet. This painting was selected in the five as one of the finalists two years ago in Wollongong for the National Watercolor uh, Prize. Uh, I was very pleased my work got selected as a finalist. This is a different composition, you know, three brister, uh, half sheet, middle stage. Yeah, um, be, pay attention, all the variety of colors, they all soft edges, everything travels, you know. The red might bleed into the blue, the yellow might bleed into the blue, but that's what I wanted to achieve uh, atmosphere, soft edges at this stage. And then finally, all the details, all the ducks goes in, then everything go crisp and the pops. So that's half sheet. This is another full sheet study, uh, full sheet drawing study stage. Uh, what I want to try to show you here is, uh, even though I'm painting the same subject, but I try not to repeat myself. Uh, each painting, I respect its originality and uh, I try to use different characters. I use different compositions. Uh, sometimes it's two versus one, sometimes just two barrister. And today we're going to just show one barrister due to time limit. And this is the final stage. This painting was um, in an exhibition in Red Hill Gallery in Brisbane and it was sold the last year uh, during the lockdown. I was very pleased as people actually buying painting during lockdown. This was just a quarter sheet and um, uh, two bristers. And um, uh, this is the middle stage. And this is the final stage. This painting probably is my fastest painting sold ever. I put on Facebook within half an hour, I got a message, somebody from America wants to buy it. I was quite impressed. But it's one of those good ones that really got the magic. I particularly uh, really enjoyed the steam coming out from the coffee machine. Um, it's it just one of those painting works got the extra bit, extra magic. Unfortunately, not all my painting has it. Some do end up in rubbish bin. Um, this Lisa, is can I ask you something, Lisa? Sure. What, what do you draw with? And it might sound daft, but well, somebody's, what do you draw with? Look, anytime during today's demonstration, uh, you're welcome to ask questions, okay? I don't mind to be inter interrupt, but if I pose, not answer straight away, I might be focused on something in the middle of the painting. Okay, this is, uh, I use a Saunders rough paper 300 and I use a pencil 2B, 2B.7 uh, mechanical pencil. Uh, before I paint today, I'll show you on my palette, my equipment. I, I, I can uh, tell you that uh, again. So this is just a 2, 2B.7 mechanical pencil. It, it looks a lot dark in the screen share, but on the actual paper, as long as you can recognize yourself, it doesn't need to be super dark, okay? So this is the middle stage, you know, you probably think, oh, it looks all messy, but actually that's a good messy for watercolor. So you don't have to be everything so neat. I actually don't like painting super neat. I like to have some areas neat, you know, there are sharp edges to make the whitest white pop, but there are lots of soft edges or you call the messy edges. That's how, your painting got a rhythm, your painting can sing like a, you know, playing piano um, music, you know, you don't have high key all the time or low key all the time, you have a high and low, you have a rhythm. Um, this is the probably last one I'll share you, this is a half sheet, again, you know, the composition, the character doesn't repeat much from my previous work. Um, this one won the second prize in Australia Watercolor Master Exhibition last year. And this is the result. Unfortunately, I didn't have a photo for the middle stage. Um, okay, today I've decided to just choose one of the, my favorite barista character. And what I'm trying to say here is the, back to the drawing stage, okay? When I try to um, start a new painting, I always ask myself, 
why I want to paint this. Okay, there's always a very strong reason why I must, I have to paint this painting. There's no point to repeat something I've done before. So this has to be something new that make me excited. Uh, today we only use a one um, single character instead of two or three due to the time. And this uh, photo I took a year, few years ago. It's one of my favorites. I've used him in an oil painting vision uh, in watercolor vision a couple of times, but every time he's in a different composition. And for today, I like his face, his uh, body as a main figure, but I think that you don't want me to paint somebody just wiping the jar. Therefore, uh, almost 90% 90, 90 time when I compose a new painting, I use more than one photo. This is very, very rare. One photograph gave me everything I want for painting. So therefore I look for my album and I saw this hand and this coffee, this cream coming out, looks way much more exciting than the one before, right? So I will be trying to uh, achieve these two together. And the background wise, I feel this coffee machine is much more interesting, more time, you know, give me the good depth. And this background is nice, give me the depth as well. So therefore I decided to use three photograph to compose today's uh, painting. And sometimes for full sheet or half sheet, all the work I've shown you before, they all rely on several photos to compose the final painting. And here's a drawing. Um, you will see this in the other, another camera later when I do demonstration. This is a drawing stage. And uh, as you could see, the main characters from one photo, hand is from different photo, and the coffee machine in the background is from a third photo. Yeah. And the composition wise, I try to use almost like an L composition. So he's leaning towards the right side of the edge of paper, uh, give more space on the left rather than he's in the middle by himself, which can be a bit boring. Um, I did do a little bit of test the other day, just so I know what I'm showing you today quite often. I get to invite you to do demonstration. I get very nervous. You know, when you paint by yourself in the studio, you're so relaxed, nobody watching. But the one I invited to do demonstration, I hope I show you the best I could do. So I did a little bit test. This is the middle stage with the, the yellow stuff is masking fluid. Uh, people do ask me how to use this or when to use it. My answer is I only use this when I totally rely on it. I cannot achieve without it. See, there's also white left in the background here. This is just a free hand left uh, white as I'm doing the first wash. You don't need to use your masking fluid everywhere. Like this steam here, don't use masking fluid. It will look so stiff, you know what I mean? So quite often I use masking fluid uh, when I must use it, I have to use it. And when most likely I rely on the sharp edges. So here's the result. We remove that masking fluid before I start the next stage. Okay, so the hand colors bleed into the vest, which is totally fine. Don't freak out when your painting looks like this, because later on, I'll show you the next result. See, the dark stuff will cover that arm you were varying for nothing, you know? So for a certain stage, you really need to relax, let the edges um, go soft and uh, travel, you know? Some of the color, this base color of the latte actually travels outside the glass, goes to the table, which is fine. Later can be a hint of a reflection, you know what I mean? So this is all something you paint underneath before all the dark stuff goes in. And of course, when, when the dark stuff goes in, your lightest light will pop. Look at this photo before. Um, this white, you know, doesn't look very white against this bluish gray, isn't it? But as soon as your black, I call it black, but they're actually not black. I'll show you how I mix this color later. When your darkest tone, darkest value goes in, this white, is totally popped. There's no white gouache here. Uh, I only use a white gouache in very, very small limited uh, spot, like a, here and there, maybe it's a highlight on the glass. If it's missing, I'll use a bit of white gouache. This painting very rare, I use a white gouache. 
Um, the best gift from watercolor painting is, you know, respect the white, white paper, which become your whitest white in your painting. Um, a few photo for zoom in. Um, look at the soft edges around here. I get really excited when I can achieve soft edges like that. You know, it's so easy to paint everything sharp and crisp. Yeah, but it's so challenging when you have a variety of uh, edges in your painting. There's the sharp edges, there's the soft edges, um, there's the sharp middle tone and the sharp dark tone um, and the sharp lighter tone. You know, there's all kinds of different edges. And uh, close up to the hands. Um, hands are quite difficult to paint, I must say. And uh, again, how to improve that? A lot of drawing, a lot of a sketch. Uh, I thank to my six years study when I was in middle school, when I was back in China. Um, my secondary school was in a professional art school. Every morning we study like a normal kid. Every afternoon we do fine art training for six years. So all my training is back there. So hopefully today we've got time to show you all this. And uh, the best part of this painting I'm actually quite proud of is the bristles face. Um, quite often I get a bit dirty about the skin, but this one actually is thin. This one got a bit magic. You can see the blue tone because this face is in the shadow and the eyebrow, everything's work and the hair looks ni nice and relaxed. So uh, this one I'm quite uh, happy to keep. Some stage, some painting, you know, when I finish, I feel, oh, that's too dirty, or oh, that doesn't look confident. I'd rather tear it off uh, through the rubbish bin than keep it uh, annoying me later. I hate to see bad paintings around. Okay, so that's all my screen share today. Hopefully, I didn't use too much time because we only have an hour or so for painting today. Uh, any questions? I'll stop screen sharing. And uh, if you've got any question for this bit, you're welcome to ask now. If not, I'll move to the next stage to show you my palette and uh, brushes. Any questions? No, no, we're good. No, okay. No, all good. Oops, sorry, I just lost the screen for a second. Uh, gosh. Let me find you back. Okay, here. I sorry, I pressed the wrong button to maximize my, my screen. Okay, here it's better. All right, now I'm going to stop this video. Oh, sorry. Wrong button. Um, I need to change this to a different camera. Okay, so now you can see my palette. All right, I'll show you my palette and my brushes and uh, before we start to paint. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, excellent. All right. Still disgustingly clean. Oh, I tried to make a few puddles to make it not <laughs> too, too clean. All right, this is my new palette. Uh, unfortunately, Melbourne has been locked down for too long. I got addicted to online sh shopping. Don't ask me how much money I spend on online shopping. And <laughs> I um, feel very guilty, but uh, one of the things I bought is a new watercolor palette. Um, hopefully, the camera will focus soon. It's a web camera. Uh, it works on its own way. A bit funny. Anyway, if you don't see this too clear, doesn't matter. Um, it's only a spare camera. This is not what you see me painting. So uh, palette-wise, I like to have a large palette for the studio. So my small my previous palette is a lot smaller. I retired it from my studio. Now I will use it for my own, uh, traveling uh, plein air painting only. So a good palette is uh, you have uh, a lot of colors, warm collection, warm color collection, cool color collection, and you have a big uh, size of wells for mixing colors. Uh, don't just use a China dish from your, um, kitchen to, to use as a palette. This is very painful. You do need to rely on professional equipment, okay? And uh, I have two uh, jars of water, one for clean brushes, one for adding to clean water. I use a small spray bottle. I do have a tube for fresh gouache for 
very small touch up at the end. So here are my brushes. I use the uh, um, Escoda brushes mainly. I do love the quality of this brush. They, they tend to have a finer point, a longer time. Um, so mop brush is for, I usually keep two in my hand. One's for adding new fresh water, the other one for painting. Uh, then I got a pearl brush in variety of sizes, uh, small ones like size six, general painting size 10 or 12, um, uh, you know, for different sizes of areas. And I do use a older brush like this to mix color. I like to use a separate brush to mix color in my palette. So I feel I'm not ruining the tips of your good brush for painting. And this is an interesting brush I would like to introduce. It's our Australian brand called the NEF or NEF, N W E F. Uh, it's a synthetic brush. It has a very fine um, square point. Yeah, it's actually designed for water, uh, for oil and acrylics. But I use this for removal technique at the final stage. If any sharp edges or highlight I could remove by this brush, I rather to do that before I decide I must use the white gouache. Okay, and uh, okay, back to drawing. For drawing, I rely on these four little friends. Uh, this one is a mechanical pencil I just mentioned before. It's a 2B.7, all right? Don't use a, a 0.9, it can be too thick. 0.5 I find is too thin. And if you use HB lead, I found that's too hard. Uh, once it, uh, once you want to rub out something, actually leave a hard mark on your paper. 2B pencil is soft enough to be removed as long as you don't dig in while you draw. And 4B lead is just a bit too dark, which can cause smudges on your paper. Uh, so that's my pencil. And I use two different types of erasers. One is just a normal rubber. Uh, try to buy a softer one not too hard. Soft one, when you remove the pencil marks, it doesn't uh, damage the surface of the paper. This one is uh, Faber-Castell kneadable eraser. I've tried different brand. This one is my favorite brand I've been using the almost last 20 years. I could not replace it with this by a different brand. So it's a kneadable eraser. It's almost look like a chewing gum uh, after two hours in your mouth, or it looks like blue tag. And I use this to remove the darkness uh, before I start to paint. So you keep all your drawing details, but it's just not too dark. And this is a retired makeup brush. I don't do makeup like this anymore. And it's good a duster. So any duster while you uh, erase on your paper, instead of use your hand, to rub on the paper, use a duster, gently dust off the rubbish from your eraser. So my goal is to interfere, disturb the paper as less as possible. Um, that's probably all the equipment. Any questions? Yeah, no? very good. All right, okay. Um, Okay, I'm going to my easel. Okay, if you can uh, highlight uh, my easel camera, then I'm in front of the painting I'm going to demonstrate. Can you see me here? Hi, Sue, can you see this one here? Yes, sorry, yes, I'm, I'm asleep. I'm okay. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Because uh, I can't see from where I am. Make sure this is the main. It is, yeah. So it's this is the main spotlight camera. Yeah, excellent. Sorry about a little bit of shadow caused from my iPhone above the easel. That's the best that I could do. But the, once I start to paint, this, this shouldn't be bothering you. All right, due to the time. And um, funny thing was I found that most people actually don't enjoy watching me drawing. So we skip that stage. Uh, I prepared this drawing this morning so we can uh, speed up with this demonstration. Most people enjoy watching me paint. One of the demonstration, oh, actually workshop, 
uh, when I did the last year with the uh, American uh, group, this one lady was so impatient when I tried to draw. She said, is she going to paint or not? Is she going to paint soon or not? So you probably all have that sort of feeling. <laughs> you can't stand watching somebody draw. But I actually love this stage, you know, believe it or not. Sometimes I just enjoy to have the pencil left um, marks on the paper. To me, this is a piece of art itself, I mean, without the uh, masking fluid. So what I'm trying to encourage people to do is enjoy your drawing, try to improve your drawing. And that's one of the key points of uh, be a better painter. Okay, so this is a, sorry, question? Yes, question, sorry. Yes. What brand of paints do you use? All right. That is a question I think people shouldn't be too fascinated about. There's a big trap, you know. I, I've seen ladies come to my watercolors uh, class say, oh, I bought it, I just bought the Winsor Newton. Now you're telling me to buy this brand. You know, that's a big trap. Don't go into this trap. Oh, you must paint with a certain brand. I can tell you my palette has a combination for Winter Newton, Holby, Daniel Smith. I actually used to use an Italian brand called the Memory Blue. I love all of them. I want to tell you is you need to know your color you decided to put on your palette. You need to know each of them, how they behave, uh, which one is transparent, which one is more like a semi-opaque, or totally opaque, you know, which two color like each other. They, 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 they have a beautiful combination when you mix them. Which two color don't like each other, don't mix them together. That's more important than, to me, uh, that's more important than, oh, go buy Daniel Smith because it's, so who, who else is using it? You know what I mean? I think as long as you're not using crappy students quality paints, buy good quality artist paint, you can afford, you know, there's different uh, level for price. And uh, if you have no idea, you know, stick with the traditional brand, whether it's uh, uh, Winsor Newton or uh, Italian brand Memory Blue. For economy, I think Memory Blue is very economic. For the certain money you spend, you get uh, almost twice the amount. If money matters to you, okay? If you like to follow the fashion, Daniel Smith is a huge. They have a probably bigger range of color palette than any other brand. So go to Daniel Smith. You can find any color you want. And the uh, Japanese brand the Holbein, Holbein is also very good. Uh, when I was in university, I was a fa was a study in fashion design. We used to do a lot of fashion design illustration painting, and I did use uh, Holbein gouache back then. So you know, if I like Holbein watercolor today, maybe relate to that. I don't know. So which brand to use, I think is a big question to yourself. And uh, I do like to explore different colors, different brand here and there. And like I said, the most important thing is uh, you know how your paints behave. Don't paint without knowing uh, how they behave. That's more important. All right, I hope I answer your question. Um, okay, any other questions before we start to paint? No, we're good. Okay, excellent, excellent. Okay, so here I'm going to, um, you know, this is the main camera for today's demonstration. If you can see my palette a little bit, that's extra bonus, but don't get too fascinated about this. A different day, different painting, I might uh, behave completely differently here with my paint. So that's not the most important. So here I'm going to just mix some color before I start, okay? So if you, uh, just highlight this palette for a second. So for just in case people are interested what color I'm going to use, I will mix some colors before I go into the paper, okay? So we'll just spend a couple of minutes here. All right, so here, uh, because I'm going to paint the background first, uh, leave the whitest white, which is covered by the masking fluid already. So the background in this sort of a serious painting, I keep it sort of cool blue. And this is just a pure uh, cerulean blue, all right? Pure cerulean blue mixed with a lot of water, you know? A pure cerulean blue 
by itself can be so vivid like that, but by diluted by at the water, it can be beautiful, um, transparent. And I really don't like just paint a painting with a single color. I always like to mix at least two colors in it. So to make a blue with a dollar, believe it or not, you can use your um, complementary color, which is uh, orange. So what I'm doing here is orange, tiny little bit adding to this blue. You see this blue is already getting dull. All right, don't go too overboard with orange. Then your paint, your, your result become more like a brownish gray rather than bluish gray. Okay, so depend on the proportion. Probably 90% of uh, blue, 10% or even 5% of the orange. You go to experience it and you tell me how you do it. All right, so this is a background color. And over here in the first stage of painting, I like to see some color travel into each other, have a foundation and a nice color. So for skin tone over here, um, you know, it's kind of orangey, red, brown. Okay, so what I have here is um, bitter orange, bitter uh, red, crimson, and a bit of yellow ochre. Um, depends on the skin, uh, depends on the lighting situation or whether it's an Asian person or it's a Western person or it's an um, African person. Skin color cannot be the same, you know? People say, how do you mix your skin color? I said, depends on who I'm painting or depends on who, what is this person? Is he indoor or outdoor? Is his face in light or in shadow, you know what I mean? But uh, uh, generally, uh, my orange, my red, and my uh, yellow ochre are my skin base. If the skin is in the shadow, I might even add a bit of blue or purple into it, okay? Next color is the underneath color of this latte in the glass. Um, so I have a little bit of this rose sienna. Rose sienna is more like a darker vision or cooler vision for uh, yellow ochre. So I keep them next to each other. It makes sense. One's lighter, one's darker. And uh, add a little bit of amber into it, just cool it down a bit. It's not too, uh, so it's not too vivid. Yeah. So I got that in the palette. Okay. Here is the black I'm talking about. I don't have black in my palette. Okay. That's one thing I hate to use, no matter I'm painting oil or watercolor. I only use black when I paint the oil in very, very small opportunities. We can talk about when I demonstrate the oil. You don't hear that. Um, so all the colors I have here, so, you know, there's a darkest green, darkest purple, uh, sepia. This is the Joseph Z gray cooler vision. So all this darkest dark, this is ultramarine. They look like black to you, but they're not black. Okay, I don't even use, um, What's that color called? Painless gray. I don't even use uh, any other uh, black or close to black. I just personally don't like them. I rather love to mix my own black. I can tell you why. Because, you know, we all know that the black is from three primary color, red, yellow, and the blue. But as a painter, you don't need to do that. We're not scientists. All I'm trying to do here is have some red, session but the darkest version some blue or green session the darkest and the brown session the darkest when i put these three together so that's my sepia all right just show you here this is my sepia which is the darkest brown and my darkest purple which is like a darker vision red you can even use red if you want to and your darkest green or darkest blue when you add all this together guess what it goes black. And the water you can control is by increase any of this color I'm adding into it, you can verify this black, whether it's going to be a brownish black, greenish black, bluish black, or brownish black. It's much, much more artistic than just get a black from a tube. Quite often that color is dead, it's flat, has no character in it, okay? So I'm having a small vision of black here, uh, not too strong, 
uh, with a lot of water in it for first stage. Second stage, I will increase this, more strength and less water. All right, so that's my, you cannot complain saying, Lisa, I didn't know what color you use. I've shown you pretty detailed what color I'm using, okay? Uh, but like I said, different day, different painting, I might use a different recipe, you know? Even you cook in your kitchen, you can't be the same spaghetti all the time, yeah? Slightly different each time. All right, back to the main camera, please. And, uh, okay. So this is the drawing already done. Masking flu goes in, okay? And the, my first stage is going to be doing the background of washes, okay? My goal is to leave the white as white, block out all the middle tone, and also suggest the skin color, uh, coffee color. That's it. So don't expect more from that stage, okay? It's impossible. Uh, I found with water, watercolor painting, yes, you need to hurry, not much time waiting sometimes, but a lot of time you actually need to be patient, knowing that a different stage doing different things. All right, you all been painting watercolor, I'm telling you nothing new here. Every time you want to um, paint a soft edge, you wouldn't paint on a dry paper, yeah? So my first thing to do is wet the paper. So clean brush, clean water. And uh, sometimes I wet it completely. Sometimes I kind of flick the brush like what I'm doing now, which means there will be certain spot missing out the water. Uh, can give me a little bit of crisp edges. Um, so, There's no reason why I do it uh, sometimes, other time not doing it. It's just totally the mood for the day or what do you think is working for this paper. You don't have to uh, get this painting all wet everywhere. You can leave some area a little bit dry. All right, to check how this, how wet this paper is, you can't tell from above. You have to look from the side of the paper. Anything is too, anything is shiny, that means it's wet, okay? So that's it. My paper is wet. And now keep some paper towel in my left hand uh, for rescue my disasters. So I hope you paid attention when I did the screenshot before because that might be the best painting you've seen today. This might be a total disaster. I can't guarantee that. Okay. Um, all right. I painted with this uh, easel. Can, can swing. Yeah, we can swing. Hello? Yeah, we're here. <laughs> oh, why I suddenly hear my own echo. All right. So uh, excuse me some stage, I might keep the uh, easel on the an angle, but uh, when I finish, I'll show you flat vision, okay? Um, I like, this is, a, I think this is the watercolor easel, it's designed by uh, Australian brand Art Spectrum. Since I demonstrated this, everybody is buying this easel. Uh, I should get uh, 10 cents or $1 from them, every easel they sell. Um, okay, so the paper is wet and then my paint is ready in the palette, ready to go, yeah? So here is my test paper. I always like to test my paints before I go onto the real paper. This is just the older painting or painting I threw away, the back side. See, sometimes the blue is just too much, which means I need to add a little bit more water. That's probably better. Okay, here we go. You ready? So I'm starting from the shirt goes into the you can even go into maybe not on the face at this stage i got the face color all right um go into the shirt the vest and uh, because you have the paper wet so you can actually relax don't need to be too panic all right i'll leave the skin color the background color can be covered 
Okay. The same color, I'm going to go into the hair. So big mop, size 14 mop brush. And go into the background. And see how my brushwork goes. You almost dance your brushwork. And here and there, there's white left because I didn't wet a certain area. If you don't like it, you can add a bit more. You know, if I want a bit more blue there, because of the paper is wet, so it's actually quite easy to work at this stage. Don't want much blue into the face at this stage. So get rid of that. And uh, around here, I do want to leave those glasses or marks. Use the bell of your brush push. Don't use the tip of the brush for this stage. Okay, some hard edges here. Never mind. Use clean water, go soften. Yeah, I don't like those hard edges. Clean water, soften it. And uh, talking about the unity of a painting, you know, at this stage, you're already thinking about unity. You're not just painting things um, individually. I'm using the same color, travel, because there's a bit of white against the shirt. So I want the background to be a little bit of bluish gray. Otherwise, that white won't pop. All right. So even though I'm painting background, I'm thinking what happened next stage. See, so far, because you wet the paper, and here and there I left some dry brush marks. So there's already a variety of edges here, some soft edges, uh, hard edges, even in this softer tone. This area is all going to be darker later. So for now, I'm happy to leave it uh, gray. All right. Don't want this blue onto the arm too much. Okay, we continue. We continue to this side. And behind him near the coffee machine, we want to see a little bit of steam, do we? Oops, there's too much blue on that. Yeah, it doesn't matter. We want to see a little bit of steam around here. So because the paper is wet, all I'm doing is just dropping some of this blue as I go. So whenever you have the blue, it's going to be slightly darker. Whenever you don't have the blue, it's going to be left white. And that's how you kind of start to have the sense of uh, steam or not necessarily steam. Sometimes it represents light. Yeah? So you're not painting everything plain. All right, we stop here, carry on to this side. Um, this coffee machine does have, okay, I can travel all the way down because I've marked down, uh, I've done all the masking fluid. So I don't need to worry about losing the whitest white here. Yeah? Around here, um, maybe a little bit above this, otherwise that white is not going to pop. Okay. And uh, wet on wet is a beautiful technique for painting watercolor. You can do all kinds of things, particularly this stage. All right. So the same blue or gray, I'm traveling down to the table. And here and there, you might want to see a little bit of leftover white, which is gives a variety. Okay. All right. All this is going to be a lot darker later, but for, for this stage, I'm just Adding a bit more blue. All right. Remember what I said, what my goal is for this stage is by the time I remove the masking fluid, 
I want to see the white is white pop and all the other middle tone uh, block out. And now I'm going to a uh, um, pearl size 12. While this is all wet, you're probably so scared to touch it, but I'm actually going to use this opportunity to add some skin color into it. All right, and what happened? The skin color will bleed into some of the hair, you know, some of the shirt, or even bleed into the background a little bit. Doesn't matter. And that's probably a beauty of your watercolor. All right. It looks a lot redder uh, when it's wet. When it's dry, it goes a lot paler. So that takes experience for you to decide how dark it is when it's wet. Um, quite often when you're painting dry, it looks so pale, it looks like a, you hardly have done anything to it. Then you need to learn next time when I put it in, it should go a little bit darker. Okay, watercolor unfortunately has this uh, shortage is, uh, once it's wet, it looks beautiful, perfect in your perspective. Once it's dry, probably 30% of the color is gone. Believe it or not. So watercolor, because the water carries all those pigments, all those strands, once it's dry, it disappears. All right. So I'm just, see, right here, the too much water bleeding from the background here. Don't panic. All you do is a dry your brush, pick it up. And sometimes you can actually see some really fun result happening. Um, you can call it a gift from a watercolor. Yeah. Uh, if it's too red, you just pick up a little bit. Uh, I believe it should be fine. See this bleeding. Yeah. If I want to bleed the other way, I can even tilt this, tilt this um, easel backwards so the color bleeds that way. Yeah. And if you want to encourage to bleed this way, you just tilt it backwards. So a little bit bleeding into the, you know, I even want a little bit of bleeding into this uh, table. It's rather nice. So it can be reflection. Okay. Oh, I forgot he's got two arms, yeah? Keep talking to you, I forgot it's got another arm there. All right, here. All right, this arm. What we are doing is just give a little bit, uh, you know, a hint. Okay, there's an arm there. The edge is actually not following my pencil drawing edge. Okay, if it's bleeding out, I let it be. For this stage, not too much control is a good thing. Okay, so this bleeding is all gone to the table. Beautiful. All right, beautiful. I'm happy with the skin. And uh, if you don't want to encourage too much bleeding downwards, keep your board flat. If you want to travel, you just go down. If you think it's too much gathering puddle, try your brush, go to pick it up, suck it up. All right, okay. Next, I'm going to uh, get on to all this uh, coffee. Uh, they, you know, deserve a little bit of color. All right, the color we mixed before, I'm testing on this paper. Because the paper is already wet, so your brush doesn't need to be too wet, if you know what I mean. If your brush is super wet, your paper is super wet, then you have a bleeding for sure, and it's way too much bleeding and uh, out of control, okay? You want the bleed, but in your control. So here I'm adding into this uh, ochre amber mix I had before. Uh, whatever the white mask gone into it, it's going to keep all the white as white. And uh, I might just keep it on the angle. So I want this, yeah, the soft edges. This is something you can't do once it's dry. Yeah, the soft edge. This glass also give a little bit of reflection to this white, uh, flat white glass uh, mark. Yeah, so give a little bit of this color to there as well. Uh, there's uh, like a chocolate uh, 
bottle for making um, cappuccino, I think. And I might just add a little bit of burnt sienna into this mix. And give a little bit of hint of that chocolate bottle with a little bit of reflection, of course. Same color is going to reflect into this um, table. Not too strong, okay? Now, while this is all wet, everything is so nice to be modified. And, um, okay, this is all looking good as much as I was expecting. Uh, this is coffee is missing. We need to give a little bit of uh, here. So coffee is in it. He is pouring the cream. Yeah. So we just put this creamy color all the way into the bottom because the darkest dark can go on top of that. Yeah. Okay. Next, this milk jug is actually black. It's funny. During the years I've been taking photos at the Brunetti in Melbourne, Ligon Street, they've, I've witnessed them change their equipment. Originally, they all their um, a milk jar or plain, you know, look like a stealing silver. Now they change to this black. I don't think as artists, I like that, but um, that's okay. All right, so this black color I mixed before, I'm not painting it too much, but same like how I did with everything else. I want to have indication. There's a black, value here, black term. Uh, even if it got a bit of fuzzy, bleed out a little bit, it's fine. So all I'm doing is just give a little bit of hint of this uh, jar. And this jar actually has a bit of reflection from this coffee, believe it or not. So while this is all wet, it's perfect timing to add a little bit of this yellow into it. Yeah, so the same yellow travels from this glass to that jar to this glass. So they all connected. So what this stage is doing is by using the advantage of the wet paper, you actually connect his face into the background. Sometimes I have big bleeding into the background. I just leave it. And later, actually, you don't notice much. This big bleeding to here later is going to be beautiful back, uh, reflection. Sometimes that bleeding go to the coffee machine, doesn't matter. And this bleeding all travels. So everything travels, which means they all connected. Okay. So before I go to the next stage, usually while this is still wet, I will just take the advantage of this wet surface and um, add a little bit more into it. Okay, give a little bit more depth and strength. For example, this coffee machine here, now it's all wet, yeah? So if you use your sides of belly of your brush. So this needs to come forward, yeah? He's behind the coffee machine. So I'm introduced a little bit of depth. Yeah, there could be the shadow from whatever around this. Um, this is still wet, but I think I'm brave enough to. So I'm just increasing the volume of uh, the blue. You know, instead of using the certain blue, I'm even changing to uh, cobalt blue a little bit. And this is our shadow behind it, yeah? And this milk jar also has a dark value. I'm not painting details yet, but I want to introduce this. Okay, so once you dark this, he is in different space, you know, they're not on the same level anymore. 
And uh, while we, you know, while we're dealing with this wet surface, I'll go back to my mop and uh, using a slightly darker blue with the same orange recipe. You know, you can go to um, ultramarine blue if you like. Try it. I mean, I sometimes use ultramarine more than cobalt. Other times I use more cobalt, less ultramarine. Okay, so where this edge of the table is quite important. It gives me depth. You know, this is the side of the table. That's the surface of the table. So this edge, I put a little bit of clumsy brushes of um, uh, masking fluid. Okay, once I remove it, you will see. All right, this color will dry out a lot lighter, trust me. So although it looks very dark now, it's going to be a lot paler, but doesn't matter. If you see my other painting before, I don't mind this area to be quite dark. Not as dark as his vest though. So um, at this stage, all right. So any bleeding come from the table, I wouldn't even bother to do anything because that's going to be a darker edge later on. All right, so I'll keep the painting flat so you can see. This area is already starting to dry out and you can see the softer edge of white against the blue. And within the blue, that could be some area has a separation of orange up here. So it's kind of cool, but has warm against cool. It's very interesting. And uh, against the, this area come to here, it's much softer. Okay, against this area, I'm starting to go middle tone and even dark tone. So even with the first wash, you keep your light, medium and dark. So whatever you do at different stage, you should look after the unity, your value contrast, your temperature contrast, my warmth and my cool, my light, my dark. Okay, but at this stage, I don't want to control the edges. But not a lot of hard edges, by purpose done by me, actually, because I wet the paper, I want to encourage all this bleeding. See that beautiful water is washing that off? Let it be. Later can be a very interesting watermarks. You know, sometimes we say we hide the cauliflower, but a cauliflower in this subject can be a beautiful wash, a beautiful mark. It could be steam or edge for something. All right. So this is what a watercolor should be, I believe. You do your best and let it behave itself. So when this stage finished, probably 70% is controlled by me, but 30% it happened itself. And that's the beauty of watercolor. And that's something I don't have it in oil painting. That's why I love doing these two mediums. Okay, so we've got a, um, another, how I'm doing with the time, Sue? Quarter time. Cost, quarter past three, I'm going well? Okay. Yeah, 15 minutes at least. Hey? 15 minutes at least. Okay. Uh, all right. I finish 3.45 or 3.30? Uh, 45. Okay. So I've got half an hour. Brilliant. All right. Oh, yeah. Usually at this stage, I believe or not, I actually have a uh, several painting going at the same time, at least three or four. So I do this stage in different uh, drawing, different painting. Then I let it dry naturally. I hate to use a um, uh, hair dryer because the heat or the wind blow it, it's actually drying in the manual way, not in the natural way. Okay, so I'd rather not to uh, blow it dry. I would prefer it to dry, uh, prefer to dry naturally. But in the demonstration, I, I cannot continue this without this is dry. So what I'm going to offer you is a fast forward button. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> and uh, voila. Okay. <laughs> See, Lisa can do magic as well. Not only can paint, okay? So I prepared this this morning. I hope you appreciate that because I know we don't have much time to wait and nobody wants to hear that this bloody hair drying. Okay, so this is more or less what you expect after what I just showed you, okay? So the white is white all uh, being, you know, the masking fluid all being removed. 
see how much lighter the skin color is. And I will leave this completely dry before I start the next stage, okay? So we don't waste any more time. I'll continue painting this all the way to 345. I hope I can finish it. If I don't, I apologize, but you've seen the result before, all right? Oh, okay. Um, get another pa paper for testing. <clears throat> How's everything going? Are you all falling asleep or are you enjoying this? No, we're riveted. I love the fast forward bit. <laughs> oh, that's the best bit today. <laughs> oh, I, don't, I don't know about that, but it's great. Okay, good, good. Okay. Um, I will get two brushes in my hand. I use this mop brush a lot, believe it or not. And uh, it's a size 14, but the, has a very good point. So it actually can do a lot of work that you wouldn't imagine. So my um, suggestion to you today is to try to use a bigger brush you can handle. Don't fiddle in with a small brush. It's not good. All right, I'm mixing more of this blue for the dark vision of the shirt. And I'm going to mix this black as well for the vest. All right, just give me a second. I'll mix more of this black, which I showed you before. And sometimes I have a bit more green in it. Sometimes I've got a bit more uh, purple or more blue. Doesn't matter. It depends on the mood on the day and also the painting atmosphere, I guess. But when you mix this dark star, stay away from tiny little bit of white or any semi opaque color. They will ruin your dark star. Okay, so I've got it there. Another color I need to get ready before I paint is this slightly little bit opaque color. Mm. All right, so shoulder on the vest is slightly lighter and I like to see that happening in my palette before I get on. Okay, I think we're ready to go. Um, other days I might start from the hair or face. Today I decided to start from the um, uh, vest and the shirt, okay? And this is a bit, can be a little bit uh, challenging. If I fail, then this painting is gone to the rubbish. So bear with me if I've gone quiet, okay? This is just clean water.
All right, so darkest dark is going to go in. Watch out. And I'll see the first stroke, see how much, how wet this paper is to decide how I modify this brush. If it's too wet, I'm actually going to just dry my brush tiny a little bit. It's very exciting this stage and can be, it's very challenging as well. And this dark vest, I try to do it with as one go. I found in the past when I try to, of course you can do it another layer when it's dry. I found the best is just leave it as one go. So if you can do this as dark as you can, as one go, instead of, you know, do semi-dark now, then go back to do darker later. This is better, okay? Less layers are always better for watercolor. All right. Towards the shoulder, there's always a bit of light. So I'm adding to this lighter vision So I'm more careful with the edges now. Yeah, don't want too much of fuzzy edges around here. All right, so that's a lighter vision of this vest around the here. And I'm going to add a bit more water into this. hopefully try to achieve a light on the shoulder. You can add a bit of gouache into it, but I prefer not to if I... If I could manage without add white into it. All right, so that's a lighter color for this vest okay here if we just drop tiny little bit of water in here tiny little bit of water in here that water will wash away this dark color hopefully to achieve a little bit of light on the shoulder okay you can use your brush to push that a little bit meanwhile towards the arm and I start to already form with uh, soft edges. See the hard edges, soft edges, great. Um, next, I might go to this, uh, um, before I, maybe before I get into that, I should do this first. All right, here, I'm going to have a little bit of, So less strength of this color in your brush. Okay, before this vest is drying out. So I'm using the same brush, same color, but less paint, more water. And to against that edge. So hopefully this eventually is going to form you a little bit of steam, all right? And of course, we want this steam to connect into the rest of here as well. So I'm going to soften this edge into the background as well. We don't want this to just stop there. So connect this into the background. 
Yeah, so this part is quite nice. I'm quite happy with that. All right, before this is all drying out, we need to come back to rescue these two edges. It's not a very, not perfect as we wish. Okay, here, too much of this black, we can paper towel and the brush. Don't let this dry, okay? If this is all dry, it was set. So don't let it dry. Pick up some bleeding from this black. You don't want it. Either use your brush, and sometimes you can use paper towel, give a little bit of suction as well to achieve an edge you wish. This bit, I rather like it. I actually want to just encourage you this forward, you know, to give a little bit of shadow from the vest connected to the sleeve. Okay, that's much better. And um, there as well. Okay, a little bit of white pop. Same with this side. If this black is bleeding too far, stop it by using the brush. Uh, some days this will just happen like a magic. Other days you need to rescue a little bit. Doesn't matter. As long as the result looks good, that's all what you want. Okay, see this uh, water is washing away of this uh, shoulder. I'll bring it closer to you. That's to me, that's watercolor is painting the painting. Okay, watercolor, water is a painting that light for you. Um, same, check all the edges. These edges, if it's gone a bit too far, you can use a dry brush, stop it. Use a side, the belly of the brush. Okay, and a little bit of this black stay there is fine because give you that softer edges. Okay, before this dry out, I'm going to add a little bit of opaque color. This is the only time I don't mind to use opaque color is to form this edge of the shirt. It's a bit of reflection from this light, I can't see. Okay, here, here we go. So there's a little bit opaque color into this mix. And because you lost that edge of this vest and the shirt, and I'm not disturbing too much, don't fiddling too much, leave it as much as you can by naturally, you know, sometimes there's a bit interesting furry edges it's rather rather nice okay Uh, I will watch how the paints are dry. I might be able to add into the bow, the tie bow now. If this is way too wet around it, you can just wait for later. But for today, I think I can do it now. So one end is towards to the face. It needs to be quite nice and sharp. See, this side is all dry. So I'm confident to achieve a dry, dry edge over there, but the side facing down to the shirt, white shirt, it's actually a bit of furry edge by purpose. Why? It's in the shadow. All right, so you have one edge, one side of the tie bow is very sharp and dry. The other side is merging into this blue. Okay, and then you can go back to tidy up if you wish so, but I better carry on. 
Um, well, gee, time goes really fast. Okay, I doubt I can show everything for the next 15 minutes. What do you want to do? Do you want me to do the face and the hair or around the hand? Yep, and face and hair first. Face and the hair? Okay, great. Hopefully we can finish that. I'm sorry, I'm not a very fast painter. Um, You're doing amazingly well. Uh, time just goes so fast. So any of this uh, edge, if it's going to be the too far, you can disturb a little bit, okay, to help it, uh, but don't interfere too much. I'd rather let it be nature, natural. Okay, let's get into the face. Um, I probably do the face skin color first, and then add the hair onto it, okay? First thing, go back to the skin tone. And I always enjoy doing this a year bit because um, it's the probably tiny little orange in the whole face. It's quite orange red, believe it or not, because the light is shining through that year, yeah? So from orange merging to this uh, bit more purpley gray, purpley sort of uh, skin tone, okay, here. See, when you paint a face like this, never stop where the hair is. Do the face into the hair, okay? So you don't have that edge. So adding, because his face is in the shadow, so this is literally give you the illusion of his face in the shadow. And remember this color dries out lighter. So don't worry if it is uh, too red for now, okay? Um, some other days I feel, oh gee, it's too light. I wish I'd done it darker while it's wet. So you learn from your past experience. And around this neck, I can see a little bit of dark color as well. So besides the red, I actually, believe or not, sounds crazy, I'm going to add a little bit of this blue into it. This blue gives an interesting sense of shadow. And uh, don't ask me what blue it is because it's whatever in the palette, you know, could be whatever the leftover blue we had before, doesn't matter. But to keep it clean at this stage. I don't like it to be dirty. All right, so there's a bit of blue and a bit of red. I'll leave it dry. Those eyes and the uh, eyebrow has to go in when it's totally dry. So I won't touch anything. Now it's time to get into the hair. I'll leave this bit dry, then come back for the beard, um, beard, mustache, eyebrow, eyes. Now it's time to do the hair. Uh, to do the hair, sometimes I just re-wet a certain area, give a little bit of, you know, um, softer edges so if you don't want anything too hard edges. So I start from the lighter color. Painting hair is quite important how your brush works behave. Don't fiddling, you know, if you could achieve something with one brush stroke, don't fiddle with two. So I want to achieve a bit of dry edges. Okay, while that is damp, 
I'm adding into the dark value of this hair. And sometimes the hair can be a bit warmer than others, sometimes a bit cooler. Okay, here, here we go. See, as soon as the dark value goes in, everything all making sense. And it's gonna make the edge a bit more believable. It uh, looks like a hair sort of brush strokes. And for this a hair style towards to the side, can be a bit cooler or a bit greener. So as I go, I'm actually modifying my color. Some areas greener than others. Uh, other areas a bit of warmer or browner than others. Be a bit of careful around this year. Don't ruin that, that little light you try to keep. Um, so whatever you do, the light is on the top, on the bottom is the shadow. And continue to that hair, we can do the beard. And it's not too black, it's more like a bluish gray. So introduce some brush stroke color, then soften away with some water. So you've got a variety of uh, value so here. And around here, I might just add a tiny bit of shadow because that hair will give a little bit of shadow onto this forward. Yeah, so it's not too sharp and clear, a little bit of soft edges here. Okay, this part of the face is drying out. Now it's a perfect time to introduce the mustache. And we we'll go to touch up the eyebrows as well, eyebrow and eyes. Right underneath of his nose. And again, when you uh, move around your brush strokes, you might modify this color. So I sometimes add a bit more the black I mix, sometimes I add a bit of lighter gray or brown I mix. So it's not all same color. If it's all the same color, you look boring. In such a small area, you need to show variety of color. See, around this side, I'm actually adding a bit more red to indicate there's a bit of leaves there, yeah? And uh, down here, he's got this beard or mustache. I can never remember which one to which one. All right, and then to his chain. His chain is actually got a bit of dark, color there and merge into this um, type of, yeah? So there's no hard edges there. Okay, then this is probably one of my favorite part of painting men's eyebrow. I draw my eyebrow every day because they're not very good. I, I love men's eyebrow. It just looks so, got so much hair on it and looks so, okay, watch out how am I doing my brush works, okay? One stroke, lift, okay? And try to do less strokes, remember I said? And yeah, so basically it's one stroke business to start. 
and then you use the smaller strokes to finish the shape, modify. Yeah, the other side towards the light is even lighter. Okay, and a uh, little bit of shadow into this corner of the eye. A little bit of shadow here. And then we go to this, um, not black, it's a brownish black, indicates the eyes. The trap of doing eyes, people tend to do, if you can see me here, or here, can you see here? Okay. If you do eyes, you know, with lines closed and the, all the way the same, that's the trap of doing eyes. When you do eye, you should keep it a broken edge, okay? Even this eye is a sharp. I do one dot here. Then keep a little bit of gap, then do the rest a bit. We can go to modify a little bit. Just keep that eye a little bit more live this way when you paint, you know, don't just do, um, instead have one circle line like that, for example, instead of doing, you know, instead of doing these eyes like this, close, what I did was like this, like that. So you actually keep a little bit of open space. So this way you're, looks more live okay and uh oh geez time is over <laughs> sorry guys i probably that's all the best i could do i don't want to keep you too long but uh, i've shown you the screenshot before and uh, it's more about give you an idea how i do things in different stage uh, exactly the same technique how i do here i'll move to there later and then um takes more time once it's dry go to fiddling with some small details. There will be always a part that you're very extremely pleased. There will be always a part you, you can learn from it and next time do better job, hopefully. So I'll just go a bit closer to show you. See this bit, the light is invented by drop a bit of water, yeah? This bit, because we lost that shape, I add a little bit of semi-opaque color with that blue to put in afterwards. So now I've got a beautiful furry edge it's rather nice, I'll leave it. Okay, this bow, upper edge is nice and sharp, bottom is nice and soft. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed today and uh, hopefully um, next summer when we're allowed to travel, um, if you're interested in this, you can join my workshop. I can have more time to show you more. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. It's been lovely, thank you. Come can you let, send us a photograph of the completed painting when it's done? Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Um, let me just go back to this uh, video, this, uh, um, this here, so I can see you again. Uh, can you see me now? Okay, can you see me now? Yep. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, yes, so um, when I finish, I will show you the result and uh, if this one didn't work well, I'll show you the one I prepared. So it's the same work. And hopefully I'll show you the in the in between drawing and the first wash stages as well. So people can remember how I did everything. And uh, unfortunately, you know, one hour just not enough to show everything. And hopefully give you a big taste of how I paint. And if you're interested in the future, we can um, do workshop and I get to show you more and you get to paint with me. And, Thank uh, you. Thank you. Absolutely brilliant. Yes. And of course, your workshop next next year in June. Wonderful. Wonderful. Okay, look great. Forward I look for, uh, hopefully, we're allowed to travel then. Really look forward <laughs> to. Uh, love the Fremantle last time was uh, March last year, wasn't it? There's some lovely messages coming in from those at home. All loved it. Right, all right. loved it. I'll make sure I read them uh, before before we stop. Okay. Um, Thank you. And I just thought to ask uh, anybody who is watching if you've got any question you wish to ask. Uh, I'm happy to stay a bit longer if it's, if it's okay for you, or 
you can ask me when you see me next time or um, you can write to me on Facebook or whatever. We'll say goodbye. Thank you very okay. much indeed. Thank you. I'll be in touch. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. Okay. No worries. Thanks, Sue. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And enjoy the lot. Enjoy it after Thursday evening. <laughs> yes, today is a Tuesday today. Yeah. So we got three more day. Uh, well, Thursday, tomorrow, Wednesday, then Thursday, and Friday we're free. Um, we don't have to, you know, locked in within the 15k. And the restaurant pubs will be open. We'll be enjoying sitting a, a real coffee and. Uh, having a coffee in the cafe and also go out have a dinner finally after how long we've been locked up. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. Um, All right. Thanks. Thanks for having me and uh, take care, everybody. Until next time, we'll see you. Bye for now. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs> um, Simona, uh, in answer to your question, uh, Lisa said it's uh, an art spectrum um, easel, correct? Yeah. yeah, I'm just quickly reading this uh, message. Yeah, the name of the easel is the Art Spectrum. I'm yes, sure you can buy it from your local shop. It's good to support the Australian brand. I always like to buy local, buy Australian made, buy Australian brand. And um, thanks for the wonderful comments. Okay. Thank you, guys. The sign off now. Thanks, Lisa. Okay, oh, and and right, give our best to Joseph. I will, I will. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.